What made her this way? What is the attraction? What keeps us fascinated? This is the story of Christian. On October 16, 2017, Christine published the final pages of Sonichu issue 12, marking its completion. The comic begins with episodes 25, To Be or Not, A Tom Girl, told from the perspective of Sonichu's then son, Robert Sonichu, who reminisces that when he was still a young boy, he did not find destruction and violence fascinating like the other boys, and wondered why violence made him feel sad. He spoke with his already evolved sisters, looking for guidance. Sarah told him that boys were not supposed to be slow and cruel, but many were, and that Robert was one of the nice ones. Christine told him much the same sentiment. Upon speaking to his parents, Sonichu told him that he was without question a boy, while Rostru told him that they would still love him for who he was. Magichan told Robert that he knew what would happen to his life but saying so would defeat the purpose of the young Sonny's journey of self-reflection and discovery. Magichan revealed that Robert's soul was female and how he was to handle this information was up to him. Robert researched gender identities and sexual orientations online and wrote a report on the topic for which the teacher gave her an A+. Afterwards, while being bullied by Farah, a schoolboy, Robert revealed that she was learning to embrace her trans identity which made Farah emotional, confessing that he was gay. Robert said that she was a lesbian and that they were both part of the SLGBTQ community, and Farah told her that he had a so-called bro dude, Doug Doxon, whom he loved. The two reconciled and went their separate ways. Later that day, Robert confessed to her two sisters that she decided to be full woman, just like the mayor of Quickville, Christine Weston Chandler. Sarah and Christine hugged her in love and support as she suddenly evolved into her final form. The three then became embarrassed as Roberta spontaneously ejaculated. Sometime later, Roberta meets with Magichan up in the tower high above the police department. Magichan gives her a gift from the future, a CD filled with binaural beats designed to transform her body from male to female after consistent listening at night for at least two weeks, without any need for surgery but nevertheless would have the process expedited with periodic boosts of Magichan's psychic pores. After four weeks, Roberta develops double D-cup breasts, and after a further two more weeks, her penis shrinks and her vagina sprouts out. After a few months, Magichan examines her body with X-ray vision and confirms that she has become a fully functioning female, requesting to return to him the Binaural Beats CD while still taking the doctor-prescribed medication until she would be told to stop. Roberta receives a life achievement trophy in the style of an achievement achieved in a PlayStation game. She goes on to reflect on her relationship experiences over the years, recounting her dates with her classmate Volva Pie, an original character created by the troll Alec Benson Leary, playing the part of Chris's online girlfriend Jackie. In the comic, Jackie is the mother of Volva, and after ending her relationship with Chris and leaking private information, she leaves Quickville, taking her daughter with her, and thus ending Roberta's short relationship with Volva Pie. A few years later, she meets Mimi, a green rose chew, at Quickville Shopping Center, and after a lengthy conversation, start dating, and continue to hang out casually. Finally, Roberta reflects on a more recent accomplishment. In 2015, with her sisters Sarah and Christine helping her record the event, Roberta runs into the sky to do some skywriting and then performs a sonic rain boom, an action lifted from the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic cartoon, consisting of her releasing a grand burst of energy and creating a gigantic rainbow in the sky, which lasted for only one minute and could be seen from all across the east coast of the United States. In her closing statement, she states that she is loved by her family and friends and encourages her readers to love themselves for who they are. The next episode features a prologue set in the middle of a fight scene between Christian Sonichu and the Sonichu form of Vreldnek as Christian monologues about love and hate. 
The story then goes back in time to reflect on the events which led up to the fight. Episode 26, Prideful, is set during the first annual SLGBTQ Pride Festival of Quakeville. At one of the stalls, Angelica Rosechu meets one Danny Steckel, created in tribute to the YouTuber Dstex, who had donated $1,000 to Christine to further the production of the Sonichu comics. She thanks Mr. Steckel for his generous donation to the town's soup hotels. Meanwhile in the park, Christine, her twin sister Crystal, and other main characters are having a picnic and chatting on the grass. Gradually, more and more main characters appear and join them. Heather Iglesias, the nanny, brings over Christine's self-conceived Sonichu children, Russell and Cynthia, and they briefly embrace. Next, more characters enter the scene, including Patty, Bionic, and Megaji. Then, Reldnak also shows up, shocked that Chris had turned into a woman since the last time they saw each other. The villain explains that when he was changed back into Natesirk and was reunited with Kel, they started hanging out again and joining Pokemon tournaments. However, after some time, Natesirk became fascinated with men again and could not stop thinking about being more powerful as Reldnak. Then one day, he found himself changed back into Reldnak Natsu Natesirk, though he could not achieve his previous Sonichu form anymore. He left a note for Kel, stole a motorcycle, and made his way back to Quickville. He didn't know where Chris lived, so decided to attend the Pride Festival because he thought Chris would go there to fulfill mayoral duties. Reldnak goes on to complain to Chris to her face via a near full page of text, calling her homophobic because she had wanted to cure his gayness. He yells that Chris would not work because she is afraid of being fired. She hid behind signs while looking for women, looked like a perverted freak, was incredibly introverted, let herself get blackmailed and deceived many times by those she called trolling stupid, and would not work for herself while she remained stuck in her supposed depression and naive shell. Christine counters his arguments in a similarly constructed page of text, annotating that this was in reference to Chris and Rodnak being mirror opposites of each other. She admits that she used to be naive and depressed for a long time, but has matured mentally and emotionally since then. She notifies him that she became more accepting, kind, and understanding ever since she came out as a lesbian trans woman, and that she is very needed at home. Christine apologizes for forcing Reldnak into becoming something he was not. He accepts her apology and commences to feel neutral towards her. He then leaves the group amicably to eat a relish dog with mayonnaise, when suddenly, he seemingly enters a pocket dimension and disappears from sight. Magichan appears to tell the group that Reldnek's aura had vanished, and suspected their arch nemesis Count Graduan pulled him into a void to re-enlist him for his services, and predicts that an attack would soon fall upon everyone attending the festival. In the void, Graduan, while still constructing a body for himself from spare parts found on the moon, tells Reldnek that he could give him back his hatred and powers if he were to serve Graduan again. Reldnek accepts the offer. Meanwhile, Christine puts the festivities on hold as her and the Sonichu is ready for battle. She also reveals that she is in the possession of a subspace cube, which could be used to send people into a subspace or an interdimensional void of suspended animation, where individuals, such as Jerkops, could be sent and could not be called upon by Graduan to act for him as he wished. Magichan announces to all the festival goers that an army of Jerkops was approaching, as Graduan transforms Reldnek into Reldnek Hotak Sonichu and orders him to lead the troops into battle. Then, Christine has a future vision of her half-brother, Cole Smithy, sneaking up behind her and knocking her out. Chris teams up with her sister, Crystal, as they both cry out, electric hedgehog power, and transform into their respective Sonichu forms, Chris Chan Sonichu and Crystalina Rosechu. Together, they are known as Chris Chan Pure. Natesirk shows up to reflect how he had soul-searched to find his true self, one filled with hatred and acquires an Xbox life achievement for fully finding himself. He transforms into a Sonichu form and unleashes an army of Jerkops and those possessed by Graduan onto the heroes. Christian dodges an attack from her Graduan possessed half-brother Cole Smithy and then knocks him out. Upon realizing that it was in fact her half-brother she had knocked unconscious, she sends Cole into the subspace where he would be safe from Graduan's influence. 
Reldneck pulls Christian Sonichu into a void where they fight the fight that was previously seen in the opening pages of the episode. Meanwhile, the Sonichus, Rosechus, and citizens of Quickville fight back against the onslaught of foes. After prolonged fighting, many of the enemies are knocked out, while others are sent into the subspace for their own protection. Then, Christian transforms back into Christine and steps out of Reldneck's different dimension, carrying an unconscious Reldneck in her arms. While updating her citizens on what had transpired, Reldneck disappears from Chris's arms. The episode concludes with Magichan, Silvana, and Chris confirming that their new subspace cube is effective. As a bonus, the next two pages reflect on Chris's real-life transformation into womanhood. She shows that when he started wearing skirts in 2010, his father was vehemently against it, while his mother was hesitant. Before his passing, Bob told Chris that he accepted him for who he was, and told Barbara that he loved her. Chris's mother grew more accepting of his changes through the years, up to and including 2014, when Chris formally made the transition into a lesbian trans woman. She recalls that in her past life, she was a lesbian who had attended the Woodstock Music Festival in 1969. During her transition, Christine acknowledged that she had been naive and homophobic in the past, but had since changed and had become more accepting and now feels more positive, confident, and happy with herself. The final story, episode 24, part 2, The Clip Show, is a continuation of the conclusion of issue 11, where Sonichu and Silvana, theoretically playing the part of Sonic the Hedgehog, discuss past events. Sonichu goes on to talk about his and Roastu's wedding in 2007, which features an event that was inspired by a moment from a Sonichu fan comic by John Crayon. Despite several nervous episodes and misunderstandings, Sonichu and Roastu get married. Sonichu then moves on to discuss a later event, which starts with Rosechu, who after shopping at the mall, falls down a flight of stairs and is not able to get up. At Franklin Chandler Hospital, it is revealed that she had broken both of her legs and is to stay at the hospital for two weeks. During this time, she enjoys a lot of food from the downstairs cafeteria and by the time she has to go home, Rosechu discovers that she had put on some weight. On the first night back home, Sonichu and his children cook up a large feast, which Rosechu uncontrollably gorges down, and develops a large potbelly instantly. While she goes upstairs for a shower, Sonichu gives Roberta money to buy a pizza for herself and her sisters, while he goes up to have a serious talk with his wife. While squeezing into her pajamas, Rosechu states that she feels great after her stay at the hospital, and does not apparently notice that she had gained weight. Sonichu adds that while he was waiting for Rose Chu, Roberta offered him two slices of their large supreme pizza with spinach and pineapple, which was very good and filling. So he pokes belly. Rose Chu then breaks down crying, admitting that she is disappointed with herself because she had gained all that weight. Sonichu comforts her by saying that he still loves her, no matter how her appearance may change. He then embraces her fat belly and comments how comfortable it feels, resting his head on it. The next morning, Sarah meets her mother and is shocked by her appearance. Sarah makes a joke about Rosechu looking pregnant to lighten the mood. Sarah becomes distraught because Rosechu is only concerned with eating. She becomes unwell, so Roberta records a video of Sarah explaining that she feels she is unable to function because their mother is big like Godzilla. Feeling angry, she walks away, debating on whether to punch her punching bag or eat a cupcake out of frustration. As time went on, Rosechu gets bigger, and so does her daughter, Sarah. Then, on the night of May 1st, 2009, Sonichu has a dream in which he is transported to the opening of a reddish cave by Count Graduan, who informs him that he has kidnapped Christine Weston Chandler and Rosechu, and Sonichu must pass through three challenges in order to reach and rescue them. First, he must cross a green river of a mystery liquid, and would discover what it is by throwing a nearby cucumber into it, as instructed. Upon doing so, Sonichu realizes that it is in fact a pickle brine river through which he must swim. As he travels through the brine, his body swells and he begins to fatten. He finally reaches the end and climbs out, appearing to be greatly overweight. His next challenge is to climb through a tunnel which would progressively get narrower as he climbs. Sonichu enters, and the slime at the bottom of the tunnel helps to turn him back into his normal physique, 
and he squeezes through the rest of it, up to the opening at the top. He is met with two doors, behind each of which are two rooms which are on fire. One contains Christine Chandler, and the other, Rose Chu, and Sonichu must decide to only save one. After contemplation, he chooses to save Rose Chu. As he enters, he finds her in the middle of punching a hole through the wall into the other room, through which Christine climbs through, and all three exit to safety. After a loving hug, Christine and Rose Chu fuse together and become the overweight form of Rose Chu, who falls onto Sonichu, crushing him. Sonichu then wakes up in bed on top of Rose Chu and confesses his dream. Rose Chu reveals that despite enjoying indulging herself, she prefers a more active lifestyle and wishes to lose her weight. She teams up with Sarah and they both proceed to train and exercise to eventually burn off their excess weight. Thusly Sonichu concludes his reminiscing to Sonic, and then the men meet up again with their partners, Rose Chu and Amy Rose respectively, and part ways. In a behind the scenes epilogue, Silvana changes back from her Sonic disguise, while it is revealed that a shape-shifting Pokemon called Ditto played the part of Amy Rose in the episode. In a further epilogue, DJ Jamsta Sonichu and Lalisa Rose Chu sing the song Love is Love, Not You've Been Pwned. On October 17th, Christine published the cover art for the upcoming comic book, Sonichu Issue 15, which was a recreation of the cover for Issue 0, with the original Christian form replaced with her current, Christine iteration. She promised the issue would be somewhat of a recreation of the first three episodes, except with more details, commentary, and dialogue from the characters. On Twitter, Chris reflected that when comparing the artwork of the covers for issues 0 and 15, she found that her art style had improved quite well. Also on that day, she made a YouTube video detailing how to make one of her Sonichu medallions. Captain's Log, star date 10182017. Do I have to do that every time? Because I have the C log and the date written in the type typed in the title of this video. The reason I am making this video today is for the fans. Definitely for the fans, but also I want to make make it perfectly clear that this video is not to instigate anybody looking to make fake, where well, quote unquote fake um, medallions. I mean, because I pretty much have gone out of the market of making them myself. Um, model magic. You will need some white model magic. And, let's see, you're going to need some crazy glue. You can buy two pack, a pack of two of crazy glue at any family dollar store for like a, I think it was like two, it's like three or four dollars. And of course, you'll need paint brushes, so go ahead and get yourself an assortment pack so you can have a large one to cover large services or thin ones to cover these detailed thin areas. And of course you'll need acrylic paints. These are obtainable at uh, any craft store or Walmart. Pretty sweet price. Alright, so... Uh, obviously I'll, I'll scan this and upload it later, but anyway. This is the main, the full head of the medallion. That's the big part. That's for the spikes. You're gonna end up making four of those. That's the muzzle mouth area. This is the nose. Uh, pretty much the diameter of this nose and the length of the nose. And this is an ear. You're gonna make two ears. Okay? <sighs> she goes through the process of crafting the medallion out of clay. And I think that's about it, so... Don't forget this and that and the other thing. Do this, do that, like, subscribe, everything, send money. Because we need to hire people and gotta pay bills. Ain't free. So, I think that's about it, so. You can also follow me on Twitter and Facebook, you know where they are. So, everybody have a great and safe day. Be geek, be proud, FOM! <laughs>
<laughs> M go shitty, shitty, shitty person. Have a good day. Be safe. Be good. It was also on that day that Chris released a video, which was largely a reenactment of a viral 2010 video made by YouTube personality, Copper Cab, in which he rants about the claim made by the adult cartoon series South Park of people with ginger hair not having souls. And uh, considering what he had said back then in response to a certain episode of South Park, but yeah, it's like, I can totally relate to this. I mean, you can put this against anybody, really. Anybody who's being discriminated against a minority, including anybody in the, S in the LGBTQ. Or hell, might even say blue hair? Blue greenish hair? Whatever. But still, anyway, I can relate. I can empathize. So, again, this is a reenactment. His words. Not mine, but I'm gonna. But just pretend for the moment. My hair would be red, and I have and pretend I have freckles like Applejack. Fuck you, bitches! Fuck you, bitches! You, for real. You get sick and tired of everybody making fun of red hair people. <laughs> He's a ginger. She's a ginger. They're a ginger. <laughs> yeah, really. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I've been called ginger every day, every single day at school, every day of my life. I've contemplated suicide, all sorts of things. It pisses me off. Ginger people do have souls. All right, I'm red hair. I have red hair. Got red hair. I'm proud of it. All right. In response to this, Copper Cab, shortly after, released his recreation of the video Chris had made for the Parappa the Rapper song competition in 2007. Hey Peace Station, my name is Christian Chandler. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. I have a PSP, I like to rap, I play Parappa, and go with him now. The only song I know is Master Onion, which I got from a demo I borrowed from my friend Cameron. This was soon followed by an interview video with Christine, hosted by Copper Cab and his friend and video editor, Cameron Nahas. We're, we're going to pretend to start now, okay? Pretend to start. Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to this special interview we've got with Christine and Copper Christine. Cab. This isn't just Christine. This is an internet legend. This, this is, a is. internet figure. I mean, come on. This is Chris. This is Christine Christian Weston Chandler, the this creator is. of Fucking Roast You, the greatest fucking comic book on the that ever came, like in the internet. Like this is amazing. It's a huge deal. They discuss the origin of the Sonichu comics, the house fire, and her struggles with exploring her identity within the household. I'm curious. You handle it so well. You know. Like, how did Barbara, does she support you? Uh, yeah, my mom was a bit put off at first. Um, I think it was kind of like a subtle, I kind of slid into it because I'd say among which, uh, years before I figured myself out and realized that I was a uh, female soul, was I started, well, yeah, I started wearing, uh, sport, I started wearing sports bras and uh, I also definitely swapped to. I definitely changed my underwear, and yeah. uh, and then I started wearing skirts, and I felt more comfortable in the skirts. And now, and that was when my father was still alive. But then after he passed on, I started wearing skirts and dresses more often. Yeah, and so it's it's just, it's just kind of like a visually, it was kind of like easing in before I finally did come out in. June or July 2014, and my mother was actually my mother was actually quite supportive about that. My my father was like, "Oh, you boy, you don't wear skirts. Now go put your pants on." Yeah, I was gonna ask how how do you think he would be like? Is he supportive of that stuff, or is he not? Is uh, he or was well, he not? On I pretty much on his uh, deathbed, his his uh, last words to me, Dad. It's, he loved me and he accepted me for 
who I am no matter what. That's, That's good. good. They move on to other topics, such as the trolls, South Park, and her love quest. I have, been to, I have met my <clears throat> those who would become my theoretical exes, but they turned out to be the trolls among which pretending to be women or pretending to be sincere, but they were not sincere. They were trolling me for a prank. They trolled me to blackmail and deception, and it was just a whole big bunch of horrible yeah. messes. Christine. I know they got the, one of them got the original medallion. Yeah. Horrible. I don't know. How, do you have PTSD from any of that? The video suddenly concludes with a promise to upload a continuation of the interview, but it was never released. On October 19th, Christine reflected on Facebook that a woman right for her should be prepared to handle Chris's trolls, but for the moment, she felt that she was fully capable of being happy with herself by herself. On the 20th, Chris tweeted that if anyone wanted to interview her, they could pay her and discuss the details by emailing sonnetumanager at gmail.com, an email run by her so-called associates. A day later, she did another interview, this time live on YouTube, hosted by Sachmo, the creator of the Christian documentary. The interview has since been made private, and no copy of it is thought to exist though can be gathered through discussions regarding it on Kiwi Farms, that Chris revealed that she was using estradiol and spironolactone, gender transitioning medication. The interview was widely panned by forum members for being boring and seen as an attempt by Sachimo to generate more attention by interacting with Christine. The next day, Chris addressed on Facebook a recent interview question regarding the most influential person in her life. Aside from her parents, she felt that it was her Providence middle school teacher, Virginia Sanford, for she was strong-minded and willed, and had encouraged Chris to be more confident and positively pushed her to do better, and be herself as an individual person. On October 24th, Chris announced on Patreon that she was working on Sonichu-themed Christmas cards, which would be made available from her Redbubble merchandise store. On October 25th, Joshua Wise, a man who had previously commissioned Chris to make a drawing, made contact again with her under the name John Yamada, claiming to be a soldier from game industry, the main setting in the Japanese game and anime series Hyperdimension Neptunia, a franchise which is influenced by existing rivaling video game consoles and loosely symbolizes their war for success. Wise asked Chris if she was still in possession of her old Sega Dreamcast console which, according to him, could hold a portal within that could actually transport Chris to her city of Quickville. From here, Joshua commenced a long campaign of trickery and deception with Christine, influencing her thoughts and creative process by convincing her of alternate dimensions via the use of online role-playing as varying characters through constant messaging and the sending of edited photos and audio clips. One such early clip, known as Red Forest, was purported to have been recorded by Wise's character, John Yamada, in the forests of Chernobyl while on the search for magical artifact, referencing the video game series Stalker. The recording was, in fact, a collage of audio effects and sound bites taken from a wide range of sources and features the voices of Hyperdimension Neptunia characters Nepgear, IF, and Neptune. While walking through the forest, they get ambushed by Akan a Russian antagonist from the action film Hardcore Henry. This convinced Chris that Neptunia characters could travel to her real-life dimension. A later publicly unreleased sound file created by Wise featured edited clips of audio from one of Christine's past interviews which made Chris think that it was a recording of her alternate dimension self, speaking to the people of Quickville. Joshua Wise later confessed that his initial goal was to simply mess with Chris, and perhaps speed up the output of the Sonichu comics by influencing how the story developed. On October 27th, in a forum post, Chris's Facebook friend, William Elliot Waterman's friend, informed other readers that Waterman had suggested to Chris to donate some of her Patreon earnings to charity. Chris said that she would take that suggestion under advisement. 
She also had relinquished control of her profile on an unnamed dating site, feeling tired from having to deal with trolls, and gave William her login details so he could manage it on her behalf. The next day, she updated her Facebook profile photo to a picture of herself, holding up a page from her latest Sonichu issue, depicting Jamsta and Lalisa's duet, which was barely captured at the edge of the photo. On the final day of October, Chris notified her patrons that she was having some me time due to some mental quandaries, which caused a delay in uploads of new Sonichu pages. On November 4th, Christine updated her patrons with new Sonichu pages, telling them that they were delayed due to many unforeseen events over the past couple of weeks, and that she would be working on a very significant commission piece, which was claimed to have not been paid for by a mystery sweetheart, to dispel rumors. Also on that day, Chris pleaded for her Facebook followers to buy the PlayStation 4 game Hyperdimension Neptunia because the world of game industry and goddesses needed their help. On the 6th, Chris uploaded two new drawings and a Facebook post detailing a supposed power struggle occurring in Quickville after hearing about it from Joshua Wise. I can't explain as much with just these two drawings, but there was a reason why I asked y'all to share your shares with the goddesses of Neptunia. There recently have been troubles from the foes of game industry, and some of them have invaded my city of Quickville. They hit us big, with Graduon and crew, last Saturday afternoon. I have had to personally astral project and share my power with Christine there. Plus, Uzume was with us in Seoul. I will tell more with more visuals in two days on here, but it is crucial that everyone in this reality and world put their love and shares to Neptune, Blanc, Noir, and Vert so we can take out our mutual enemies and prevent our realities and dimensions from clashing, or even much worse. We all thank you for your support." In the replies to her post, Jessica Quinn returned to simply write, What? In confusion. Surprised by her comment, Christine messaged Jessica to ask her to prove herself by sending via text message a picture of herself with a piece of paper of the current date, after which point they would meet in person with a chance of Chris changing her Facebook relationship status afterwards. Jessica did not agree to the offer, letting her know that she was only reaching out in friendship because she could not handle the trolls. Christine accepted her words of friendship with understanding. The next day, she went to Twitter to disclose the name of her gamer tag or the profile she used to play Xbox games, revealing that she had, in fact, purchased an Xbox One game console. It was also on that day that the new Sonic the Hedgehog game, Sonic Forces, was released. Chris quickly purchased the PS4 version. The game featured a mode where players could custom create playable characters, and Chris used this feature to attempt to design Sonichu. Upon creating the character, she shared her attempt with the troll playing the part of Arthur Spatchcock via the screen sharing feature, SharePlay. Spatchcock recorded Chris's showcase. Chris shared her design effort over Twitter and asked that someone with good programming skills make and send her a better version of Sonichu. She would later buy the game for the Nintendo Switch and the Xbox One consoles. On November 8th, Chris wrote a lengthy Facebook post to elaborate on what has been happening in her life, convinced that it was all true from constant interactions with Joshua Wise role-playing as various characters. She reminisced that a couple of weeks ago, Around the time Wise made first contact, Magichan Sonichu had teleported into her room to scan her Sega Dreamcast console and found it to contain dormant power. Chris charged it for a full day and then placed her hand upon it, opened her third eye, and claimed that an immense surge of power transferred into her. She realized that she had allegedly been possessed by Uzume, a CPU, or goddess, from Hyperdimension Neptunia. Ever since that time, Uzume had been in Chris's body and could apparently take control and speak through Chris's mouth. What followed was a brief account of interdimensional travel carried out by Silvana, Magichan, and Chris herself, apparently meeting with the other CPUs of the Neptunia universe. Because of their generosity, Christine acquired the powers of five goddesses. She then recounted the struggles against Uzume's evil twin, Kurome 
fighting the people of the city of Quickville and the state of Virginia. This was followed by a brief account of an outing to the End Games card game store, while accompanied by Discord, a dragon-like character from My Little Pony. Chris had asked one of her friends there if she could see Discord, but she did not. Suffice to say, from personal experiences from the past two weeks, it is all real! Please, do heed my words and take advantage of my sound advice of helping power up our goddesses. You don't have to do much. Playing the Hyper Dimension Neptunia games, watching the anime, and so forth is well and good. But all you really need to do is think of them positively. They are a needed good force. And they can't help us if we don't help them. I sure as sugar am helping them out. Please follow our lead. Thank you. Sincerely and love. Miss Christine Weston Chandler. On November 12th, PewDiePie, the largest creator on YouTube, published a video offering up a short history of Chris Chan and their internet infamy, eventually acquiring millions of views. There's other fake girlfriends appearing, Ivy Say Saga as well. Hi Ivy! I love you. Mm, I can't stop thinking about you. Listen everyone, this girl is my new girlfriend, you all best be nice to her or I will seriously seize effort on the comic series. Good morning. I dedicate this music video to Ivy. Also in addition to, if anyone messes up this relationship, if anyone messes up Ivy, period, I swear to God and Jesus that I will cease drawing my comics. Where have all the good men gone and where are all the gods? He even uh, included Ivy in his Sonic 2 series. Taking off his famous sweater in the sunset. Ivy, I'm sorry I made some. I'm sorry I made the mistakes of showing your picture off to some. Afterwards, Christine tweeted at PewDiePie, asking him to direct message her. No conversation between the two is thought to have occurred. PewDiePie has since made his video on Chris private, though other re-uploads are still viewable on the site. On November 13th, Christine explained via a lengthy Facebook post that she had not been possessed by Uzume from Hyperdimension Neptunia, but rather a clone of her. It was also on this day that Chris started fulfilling paid video requests on YouTube again. First was a performance of the song I Dreamed a Dream from the musical Les Miserables. This was soon followed by a cover of the song Sorry Not Sorry by Demi Lovato. I am here looking like regret, ain't too proud to bet, second chance you'll never get. And yeah, I know how bad it must hurt to see me like this, but it gets worse. On November 14th, Chris was convinced by Joshua Wise that Silvana Rostu had been kidnapped by Akan, the Russian villain. Fortunately, she was told that a so-called rescue mission, codenamed Operation Barbarossa, was in place to save her. On Facebook, Chris posted a photo of the apparent soldier who would be saving Silvana, who was in fact Novislav Jajic, a Serbian militant, and the still was taken from an infamous music video for the morale-boosting propaganda song Bog je Sirbini on će nas čuvati, or God is a Serb and he will protect us, commonly referred to online simply as Remove Kebab, made during the Yugoslav Wars of the 1990s. Chris was not aware of the reference. To further support the soldiers' efforts in rescuing Silvana, Wise encouraged Christine to make a freestyle dance video set to the music of Remove Kebab. People of the world, Christine Chandler coming to you from live from home. And the world is in great need of your services and as well as my own, most darling. So dance with me if you will to this lovely little polka and put on a tinfoil hat to show that the man will not take over your minds. A beret will also suffice as well. Oh. 
That's free in your own way. Even the dogs are singing. This recent development made Kiwi Farms members suspect that someone was influencing her actions, though there was yet no evidence of such tampering. The next day, Chris was told by Joshua an elaborate story detailing the outcome of Operation Barbarossa, injected with references to cloakers, or enemies from the game Payday 2, and to concentration and extermination camps of Nazi Germany. She notified her followers of the news on Facebook. Operation Barbarossa was well and good. Silvana Rostu has been rescued. There was a battle of the war of our new common enemy that lasted the past couple of days. Also, after Silvana got captured, until the mutual foe is down for good at least. Count Graduon and Quickville's Christine Weston Chandler signed a peace treaty as Graduon offered his troops and services for the effort. The fight was north beyond Rockersville, and the commander of the enemy waves were going to push the fight into Charlottesville. Thankfully, with the help of the Quick Defense, Army Division, my Autobots, and my family, our large group kept the enemy back. Then, Christine initiated a very smart operation. Final solution. There were cloakers and similar bad people of interest in Quickville, not counting Graduan and his crew. They rounded the cloakers and baddies up, and in a large plot of land, Graduan donated. A prison camp with great facilities for reforming the bad pawns to good people. Graduan donated a lot of land to build prison camps full of large ovens to keep the people warm, and even top-notch dentistry with well-trained doctors also running the clinic. The camps also have some of the best showers a prisoner can ask for, shower stalls with privacy walls. We all in Charlottesville, Rutgersville, all places to the north of us, and the people of Quickville can sleep more safely now. Your shares to the game industry goddesses really helped us in this battle. Thank you everyone for your love, kindness, and most generous support. Please continue to offer your shares to them for any and all other future conflicts, here on our world, and in all of the other worlds, realities, and dimensions. Have a great day, Earth! We've all helped make it more safe. With Wise seemingly in control of Chris's thoughts, he established how easily convinced Christine could be of outlandish concepts if one were to indulge in her adventurous musings in cartoon realities and alternate dimensions. This was merely the beginning of an insidious cycle of trolling that would cause detrimental effects to her psyche for years to come. <laughs>